Welcome back to the Savage Nation. We have with us now uh, the lady of the year, uh, the only person with the uh, courage to stand up for herself in front of a very powerful man with very thin skin. It's Governor Jan Brewer, who released the letter that she handed to the president, and apparently it was about her book, Scorpions for Breakfast. Joining us right now, her time is short, is Governor Jan Brewer. Welcome to the program, Governor. I'm honored to have you on the program. Thank you, Michael. I'm honored to be on with you. Well, you look, I, I know you're going to have to downplay what actually happened because you're a public figure, but everyone knows about the famous finger-wagging. Uh, you would, as I said on the show yesterday, it seemed to me you were gesticulating, not really pointing at him. Would that be a fair assessment? That would be a very fair assessment. I'm very animated, and when I speak, I talk with my hands, and um, evidently the photo was probably taken at, at a time when I was expressing myself, that I was not disrespecting the president, nor was I pointing my finger at him. Regardless What's of the liberal I'm, media, I'm sorry, Governor, you know, I, I said on the show yesterday that Italians tend to talk with their hands, Jewish people do, all Mediterranean peoples, especially older people, talk with their hands. I'm not going to ask you what your ethnic background is, but it looked to me like you were talking and you got animated and your hand went up. Why are they making such a big deal about that? Is he a deity? Isn't, isn't that what the liberal media always does? I mean, you know, they come after uh, conservatives and they come after conservative women. I mean, yeah, I, I, uh, so in other words, even though you were a woman standing up to a very powerful man, that didn't matter. And I'm sure even the women's, uh, the left-wing women attacked you for daring to be so uh, brazen as to state anything to the president. But what was he really upset about? The, the rumor says that there was something in your book that he didn't like. Is there any truth to that? Right. Uh, I, I arrived at the uh, tarmac uh, to greet him and welcome him to Arizona and told him that I had uh, kept the sun up for him and wanted to share with him how excited we were that he was coming to see Arizona's comeback and that um, I was excited that uh, we were leaving the country and he wasn't too interested in what I had to say and I said, uh, uh, Mr. President, I have a, a, a letter here I'd like to give you. He said, what's in it? And I explained to him what was in the letter and I closed with saying that in, you know, in the last sentence I said, I reiterate my invitation for you to come to the border uh, with me to see what's going on. And I was still even by lunch. And uh, he said, um, I, uh, I read your book. Mm. I said, he said, I read, at that point when you said, I'd like to invite you to the border, he went to another subject and he said, I read your book. Right. And was it with any derision that he said, I read your book? He said that he didn't, I, I, no, I, I, I take that back, I said to him, he said he didn't like what was in my book, and I said, did you read my book? And he said, no, he said, I read excerpts from the book. Well, what, what, what did he not like about, that you stated about him in your book? I'm sorry? What did you say in your book that you think got the president upset? I think that he believed that may I, myself saying that he was, I felt that he was uh, condescending and probably that I thought he was patronizing me. I'll tell you, Michael, I was at the White House, uh, respected the White House, it's America's house, and, and the president, and I sat and I listened to the president at length. Um, he wants to talk about uh, comprehensive immigration reform, amnesty, if you will, and I want to talk about securing the border. So I listened to him, and then I proceeded to tell him what I believe should be done about the illegal immigration and the drug cartels and the violence that's taking place. And um, we, in the end, determined that we were going to uh, disagree agreeably. And um, it was um, not, he was not interested in what I had to say. And no. In other words, his mind is made up. Don't confuse him with the facts on the ground. Right. Well, you know, as governor of the state of Arizona, I have a right to represent the people of Arizona. We have a right to have that dialogue and that debate. And I felt I wasn't received. But the bottom line is, is that he obviously was more concerned about my depiction of him uh, other than what I was writing in the book about the illegal immigration and the drug cartels that we face every day. The violence. So he's a, he's a very, very, uh, uh, let's put it this way, incapable of accepting any criticism, would you say? Well, I, I would look at it that he is very, very sensitive and very, very thin-skinned. And mm. uh, today, I guess, it's been reported that other people have experienced uh, similar uh, situations. But the bottom line is, is that I'm not going to back down. I will stand by every word in my book. 
and I will continue to fight for Arizona, and I will continue to fight for what I believe is um, the American population. I believe they agree with Why do you think that this government is so anxious to go against the people of the state of Arizona who voted fair and square and said we want a crackdown on illegals who are swarming over the border, the drug cartels are threatening our lives, the same thing happened in other states. Why is the federal government not only tone deaf to the actual people, but to the governments that are supposed to direct these states, what is it that they really want to happen? Is it all for the votes of the illegal alien, Governor Brewer? What is it? You know, Michael, I think they have their own agenda, and they're going to get it completed one way or the other, and they're just simply not listening to us. And I do believe that they uh, want, and I explain that in my book, Scorpions for Breakfast, why that they won't secure the border. It's a simple fact that they know that those people are coming across here. They get government jobs. They get involved with the unions, and then they can control the unions, and, the, and these unions control government, and it's job security, and they can say what they wish, that they don't want them here on the face. Bottom line is, it's they want them here. They want them here for more than one reason. So the government is representing the, uh, the non-citizen rather than the citizen, especially in case of your state of Arizona. Governor Brewer, after this um, joust about with President Obama, what's the ramification been in your state from, from polls, voters, such as that? Well, it would appear that, at least from what I am hearing and what I am reading and uh, emails and phone calls, that people support me. And they realize that, that it was the liberal media that was putting the spin on it, that I was disrespectful, um, uh, and that they believe in what I stand for, and that they're grateful that I'm fighting, that I'm fighting for them, and I will continue to fight. Why would the media, media call a, a woman disrespectful for saying something to a president? I thought that they're in favor of women for asserting themselves. Well, we would all think that. That's what they always uh, talk about, isn't it? They talk about civility and, you know, and then they want to throw out the race card and light it up. But um, I'm going to ignore that. Oh, wait, wait, what does this have to do with race? I don't understand it. You mean they're making this into a racial issue? Well, we, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That has been all around, too, that I'm a bigot and a racist. You're a bigot for daring to say something to Obama? You mean we all have to bow down to him to show we're not racist? You know, I, 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 that's what I've read. That's what I've heard. So uh, it, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's. It, 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 I, I know that that was cu current in the, in pharaonic times in Egypt, where when a ruler uh, 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 entered an area, everyone had to bow down on the floor. I didn't think that was part of our constitutional requirement. Well, you know, if you call a race card, then you set down the debate. But I am not going to set down. I'm going to do what's right. Well, you brought attention to the issue of issues, which is the porous border with Mexico. Janet Napolitano, since becoming uh, Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, has been the greatest disgrace and disappointment in the history of that department. I'm not asking you to agree or disagree, but the fact of the matter is you are facing this on the ground with your highway patrol, with your police, uh, with your local sheriffs. Why don't you tell the listeners to the Savage Nation exactly what you're facing in Arizona from the swarm of illegals coming over the border? Well... We have uh, illegal immigration to the uh, uh, to the amount of the population of the city of Douglas coming across every year. So we have you know thousands of people coming across, and along with the illegal immigration, uh, people might even want to come and get a job. We have the drug cartels, and they're coming across, and they're terrorizing the ranchers down south. Then they're establishing drop houses. They're kidnapping people. Uh, they're torturing them. Then they're extorting money from the people uh, uh, south of the border to get their loved ones released up here. They're coming after our children to get them to be a little mini drug mules and giving them a few bucks and so then eventually they drop out of school. The list God. On, and on and then the other issues of, 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 of illegals um, uh, doing things that uh, criminal and uh, are arrested for. And then between all of that and on top of all of that, we're paying for health care, education, and incarceration rates to the tune of about $1.3 billion a year. Out of uh, it's no, it, Governor Brewer, th it's no different in California. Unfortunately, we have a governor named Brown yeah. who who has the same backwards policies as does the president. He also knows what the illegals are doing to the state of California. He knows the voters want it stopped, and yet they're going against the will of the people. That's absolutely. And, and by the way, Governor Brewer, even Democrats want the illegal alien problem solved, incidentally. 
I agree. I agree. I have uh, hundreds of uh, Hispanic uh, uh, citizens here that agree totally uh, with our position. They understand the rule of law. They understand what is becoming a, 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 cri a huge crisis. It's an invasion. And, you know, uh, Mexico is our number one trading partner. So when Mexico gets destroyed, it has our economy up here also. Not only them, but us. 47,000 people murdered south of the border by the drug cartels. Isn't it amazing that the left-wing media has the nerve to say that you're standing up for the people of Arizona and standing against the swarms of illegals as a publicity stunt. Can you believe this? Governor Brewer has to run along. Her book, you have to buy it, Scorpions for Breakfast, her fight against special interests, liberal media, and cynical politicos to secure America's border. It's an astounding book. You really owe it to her to buy the book. Never mind publicity stunt. It's a reality stunt. Governor, we love you. Thank you. Thank you for your support, Michael. God bless you. God, if we had more women like her, it would fulfill my prophecy that women will save America, because the men certainly aren't doing it.